In the opening scene, we are introduced to two high school girls named Tomoko and Misami, who are at Tomoko's house for a sleepover. Before getting ready for bed, the two friends talk about a videotape recorded by a boy in Izu. This tape supposedly curses the viewer to die within seven days after receiving a sinister phone call. Tomoko then confesses that just last week she and her friends watched an unusual videotape and subsequently received an eerie phone call. Hearing this, Misami connects the dots and assumes that Tomoko may be destined to meet a similar tragic fate. As they discuss their concerns, they receive an unexpected phone call that sends shivers down their spines. They nervously pick it up, and much to their relief, it is from Tomoko's mother, who informs her that she will be home late. Relieved, Masami goes to use the restroom, while Tomoko proceeds to fetch some drinks. During this moment, Tomoko witnesses the TV mysteriously turning itself on. She promptly switches it off, and returns to the kitchen for her drink. However, within moments, she senses someone behind her. As she turns around, she is suddenly attacked by an unseen presence leading to her death. In the next scene, we are introduced to Tomoko's aunt, Reiko Asakawa, a journalist who is in the midst of conducting interviews with teenage girls. One of the girls recounts the same cursed video and the subsequent creepy phone call that foretells their death within a week. Curious, Reiko inquires if anyone has actually died as a result of this curse. In response, the girl reveals that a high school girl and her boyfriend were tragically found dead in their parked car. Later, at the office, Reiko checks a newspaper paper article detailing the deaths of a 19-year-old boy and his 17-year-old girlfriend in their car. In order to gain more information about the case, she asks her colleague, Okazaki, to find the name of the high school attended by the deceased couple. That evening, Reiko receives the tragic news of her niece's passing. As a result, she, along with her 7-year-old son, Yoichi, attends the funeral. While Reiko is busy talking to the relatives, Yoichi walks upstairs to Tomoko's room and looks around. He is staring at the TV when his mom walks in and takes him away. Afterwards, Reiko goes to talk to Tomoko's classmates, from whom she learns that Tomoko and her three other friends who had watched the cursed videotape mysteriously died at the same time on the same night, with their faces twisted in sheer terror. Reiko also discovers that Misami, the girl who had been with Tomoko during her unfortunate end, suffered from severe trauma and is now hospitalized. The following day, Reiko visits Tomoko's house and goes into her room. Upon looking around, she finds a receipt for a photo album. At the same moment, Tomoko's mother walks in with a deeply sad saddened face, and shares how she found her daughter lying lifeless on the floor. Later, Reiko retrieves the developed photos from the lab and learns that Tomoko and her three friends had gone for a trip to Izu Pacific Land Resort. As she goes through the pictures, she stumbles upon one with their faces blurred and distorted. On the same day, Reiko decides to visit Izu Pacific Land Resort and checks on the B4 cottage where the four friends had stayed. She presents the picture to the receptionist, inquiring if he noticed anything amiss as the receptionist checks the records. Reiko's gaze falls upon an unlabeled tape. She brings it to her room and plays it on the television. The tape features brief, unsettling scenes that appear unrelated, accompanied by jarring sounds and ending with an image of a well. Well, 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 says Reiko. As soon as the tape is over, Reiko witnesses an apparition, but finds no one when she turns around. This startles her, and she is about to flee, but at the same time, she receives a phone call that emits the screeching sounds from the tape. Taking the threat of death seriously, Reiko hurries out of the cabin with the tape in hand. Believing that her life is now limited to just one week, Reiko seeks out her psychic ex-husband, Ryuji Takayama, for assistance. She asks him to take a picture of her, only to find her face blurred in the photograph, providing further evidence of the curse that has befallen her, or maybe Ryuji needs a new camera. Despite Reiko's reservations, Ryuji watches the cursed videotape. Did Bro not see that photo? And agrees to help her. A day later, Reiko creates a copy of the videotape for Ryuji to conduct a more thorough analysis. After hours of scrutinizing the footage, they uncover a cryptic message spoken in an Oshima dialect, translating to, Frolic in brine, goblins be thine. Tolkien wrote this. In an effort to decipher this dialect, the two plan to journey to Oshima the following day. Until then, Reiko takes her son to her parents' house and spends the night with them. That very night, Ryuji contacts Reiko and tells her that the woman in the video is Yamamura Shizuko, who tragically threw herself into a volcano four decades ago. I don't think that made it to the remake. Later on, Reiko awakens in the middle of the night, only to see the apparition lying on the mattress next to her, and it vanishing in an instant. Just then, she hears a noise and discovers Yoichi watching the tape. This freaks her out, and she asks why he watched it. In response, Yoichi reveals that Tomoko 
asked him to do so. The next day, Ryuji and Reiko sail off to Oshima. During their journey, Ryuji confesses that he sensed something when he visited her house earlier, which he believes to be Tomoko's spirit. Upon arriving at Oshima, they are picked up by a man named Hayatsu, who drives them to their inn. During the ride, Reiko wonders why Shizuko committed the unthinkable, and Ryuji explains that she was rumored to be insane. According to Ryuji, Shizuko gained widespread fame on the island for her ability to predict a volcanic eruption. After learning about her abilities, a professor named Dr. Ikuma brought Shizuko to Tokyo for experimentation, aiming to prove the existence of extrasensory perception. Dr. Ikuma suddenly disappeared after being dismissed by his university, but Ryuji doubts that he is still alive. After a while, they arrive at their inn, but Ryuji feels something strange as soon as he steps inside. He opens the door to one of the rooms and comes across the very same mirror that appeared in the video. Shortly after, they see Shizuko's brother, Takashi. Reiko promptly approaches him, seeking information about Shizuko's daughter, but the old man says that she has no daughter. Later that night, a hotel staff member approaches Ryuji and Reiko and hands them a picture of Shizuko with Dr. Ikuma. The following morning, Ryuji approaches Takashi on the beach and asks what Shizuko was like. In response, he claims that she was a strange one, as she used to sit on the beach all day long, staring at the sea. Ryuji proceeds to question if Shizuko could read people's minds. Hearing this, Takashi ignores the question and tries to leave, but Ryuji admits that he also has a similar ability. He presses further, asking if Takashi was the one who spread the rumor about Shizuko's abilities, but the latter doesn't want to talk about it. The old man tries to leave, but Ryuji stops him. During this, he has a vision, through which he learns that Shizuko, prior to her death, gained notoriety following a public demonstration of her psychic ability, organized by ESP researcher Dr. Ikuma, with whom she had an affair. Extra sensory, indeed. He also learns that Takashi had attempted to make money off of Shizuko's abilities. In the midst of these revelations, Reiko joins them and also witnesses the flashback. During the demonstration, everyone believed that Shizuko didn't have any powers, and that she was deceiving them by showing some magic tricks. But then, a sudden death among the spectators shocked everyone, leading them to consider Shizuko as a monster. At the same time, Shizuko saw her daughter, Sadako, there, and asked if she had done this. Here, Ryuji understands that Sadako can kill people through the power of her thoughts alone, and she presumably did so because she was unable to tolerate the crowd badmouthing her mom. After learning all of this, Reiko makes a call to Okazaki and asks him to help her find Dr. Ikuma and Sadako. Not long after, Reiko receives a call back from Okazaki, who tells her that there is no trace of either of them. Ryuji believes that the video is not from this world, and it is Sadako's wrath. He claims that Sadako has put a curse on them. A few moments later, a man walks in and informs them that all the ferries have been cancelled due to an approaching typhoon, leaving them stranded on the island. This news devastates Reiko, thinking that she has only one day left to live and might not see her son again. A short time later, Reiko comes to the sudden realization that Ryuji never received a phone call after watching the cursed video, as she did back in the cabin at Izu Pacific Land Resort. She shares this detail with Ryuji, sparking something in his mind, and after a lot of thinking, he theorizes that Sadako died in the land where the Izu Pacific Land Resort stands now, and only the people who watch the video there are killed. Sensing the urgency to go to Izu Pacific, they request Takashi to transport them there in his boat, and thankfully, he agrees. As soon as they arrive there, Ryuji procures some necessary supplies from a local store, and they set off toward the resort. On their way, he asks about the time when Reiko watched the video, as today is the deadline for its curse to take effect. In response, she tells him that it was around half past six when she watched it. Upon reaching their destination, they discover a sealed well in the cabin's crawl space. When they place their hands on the well, they experience another vision, where Dr. Ikuma brutally assaults Sadako, pushes her into the well, and traps her inside. Following this, Ryuji and Reiko somehow manage to remove the well's cover and open it. Ryuji ventures inside, where he finds remnants of Sadako's broken nails on the walls, indicating her desperate attempts to climb out. Determined, the duo starts the process of draining the well in hopes of locating Sadako's remains. Personally, I hope they don't locate them. As the clock nears seven, the fear of impending death overwhelms Reiko, causing her to faint. Ryuji then comes out from the well and rouses her back to consciousness. He asks her to descend into 
into the well and continue the draining efforts, but Reiko seems to have given up. As a result, Ryuji reminds her of Yoichi. Wait, that's right. I have a son. Finally convincing her to proceed. Upon continuing the draining process, Reiko makes a grim discovery. Sadako's hair emerges from the well, and before long, her skull surfaces in the water. A short while later, Ryuji realizes that the deadline has passed without any adverse effects on Reiko. This leads them to believe that the curse has been broken. In the aftermath of this event, the police arrive at the scene, and Ryuji drops Reiko back off at home. The following day, Ryuji is working at his place when he notices an unsettling event. His television mysteriously turns on, displaying the well featured at the end of the cursed tape. The vengeful spirit of Sadako emerges from the well, advances toward Ryuji via TV, and instills such terror in him that it claims his life. Meanwhile, Reiko, who is trying to contact Ryuji during the same period, hears his final cries over the phone. She rushes to his residence, but the body is already taken away by the authorities. She then retrieves the videotape before returning home. Perplexed by the fact that the curse seemed to lift from her but not from Ryuji, Reiko ponders the reasons behind this disparity. Before long, Ryuji's spirit appears behind her and points towards her bag. She opens the bag and discovers a copy of the original videotape. She finally deduces that the actual way to break the curse is by copying the tape and showing it to someone else within seven days, thus perpetuating the curse in a never-ending cycle. With this understanding, Reiko, in a desperate bid to save her son, drives to her father's place in order to show him the tape. Never liked dad much anyway. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.